Hi to everyone, your Pyral here with some more Pokemon Platinum. Last episode, we made it through the eastern side of the battle zone, which comprised mainly of routes 228 and route 229. So yeah, now we're in the resort area, which is the last town area of the game for us, which feels really weird to say, but yeah, we're pretty much almost done exploring the center region and the battle zone in its entirety, which is kind of exciting but there is still quite a bit of stuff for us to do in this let's play we're not quite done anyways now that we're here in the resort area we're just going to do a bit of exploring do you know there's a sure way to change the world do a headstand and the world turns upside down yeah but uh you probably can't keep up a headstand for that long because all the blood will rush to your head and whatnot and you'll probably just fall over see wherever you are in the world whoever it is in the world everyone knows pokemon true Pokemon is pretty much a worldwide phenomenon, especially in the world of Pokemon. So the resort area, there really isn't much to this place. You know how you can dig up cool stuff in the underground, people are saying they're digging up new different stuff. Yeah, I already went over the new fossils that you can dig. There's also some other items that you could grab in the underground, but uh, the resort area, oh, the Ribbon Syndicate is a place, but uh, the resort area has gotten a bit of a change compared to how it looked in Diamond and Pearl. So uh, there's always that. If you're playing through Diamond and Pearl, you might be surprised at how different it is here in Platinum. But um, yeah, Let's see Nugget here. The resort area is a place for rich and snobby people, I guess, mainly at the resort syndicate, which is a building here. I've drawn a long way to make my beloved Pokemon even more beautiful. That will make it love me even more. Uh, I guess. But yeah, this is mainly intended to be like a rest area compared to the rest of the battle zone where it's just battles, battles, and more battles. And now you, let's see, the best trainers from all over congregate at the Battle Frontier. It's not limited to Sinnoh, no. It must be a happy achievement to be able to win there with your favorite Pokemon you've caught yourself. I thought you were talking about the Battle Frontier not being exclusive to Sinnoh because it's not. It's also in Johto and in Hoenn. All I need to be is my T or all I need to be happy is my TV. That's all I need. I'm so much just from sitting here. Uh, yeah, the marking map can track some Pokemon. I think you say some other things too. Eh, whatever. So you've seen every Pokemon in Sinnoh. That is so cool. I'm gonna travel with Pokemon when I get bigger. Go for it. Traveling around, it's always fun. So this here is the Ribbon Syndicate. You're just chilling in the pool. See, but something lurks in the resort area. It's the hidden ruler of the area. You have to believe me. If you believe, if you believe me, whip out your super rod and go fishing. Who knows, you may just catch the mind-blowing ruler. Actually, that is something I want to talk about. Because here, in the waters of the resort area, if you do use your super rod, you can find something pretty interesting. It's not a new Pokemon, but it's still pretty interesting. So, using the Super Rod, you can find Magikarp. But there's something special about the wild Magikarp that you can find here in the resort area. If you use the Super Rod, you can find Magikarp between the levels 1 and 100. <laughs> it's insane. Which makes Magikarp simultaneously the lowest level wild Pokemon you can find in the game and the highest level wild Pokemon you can find in the game. Now let's see if I can find one that, that's at a higher level. I've never found one that is at level 100. The closest I've gotten is level 93. But who knows, maybe I'll get lucky here. I'm not gonna try to fish them up too much. 65. That's actually a... Uh... Higher than everything in the rest of my team right now. But yeah, it's uh... It's interesting that for some reason you can find Magikarp at such ridiculously high levels. This is only exclusive to Platinum. If you were to try to fish here in uh... In Diamond and Pearl, you'd just find Magikarp at different levels as well as some other Pokemon, I believe. But... And this is the first time they've done that in the series, where you can find Magikarp between these levels. You can find them in an area in Black 2 and White 2 at the same 
level parameters, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Now, there has to be, like, a hidden item around here, right? No? Then what's the point of going back here? Up here? No? I was, like, 99% sure there was a hidden item around here. Huh. I guess not. Anyways, uh, this here is the Ribbon Syndicate. If you go in, this lady will stop you. I do apologize. This is an, <laughs> this is an exclusive establishment open only to a select few. You might consider it a special stage for the cream of the crop. If you wish to enter, I suggest you start by collecting lots of ribbons. Oh, wait. Oh my gosh, look at all your ribbons. I truly apologize for my rudeness. It's so out of character for me. If you'd be so kind, we'd be honored to invite you. No, no, no. You really must join as a full-fledged member. And we were made a member without any say in our decision. So, you can't become a member of the Ribbon Syndicate unless you have 10 unique ribbons across your party. I just happen to have 10 unique ribbons put on Genbu. The easiest way to do this is to go over to, I believe it, the NPC's name is Julia's house? Yeah, Julia, I, you go to her house in Sunny Shore City and talk to her every weekday and she gives you a different ribbon for that. Then of course there's the effort ribbon that you can get in Sunny Shore City, the ribbon you get for defeating the Pokemon League, the footprint ribbon that you can get from the footprint guy in Route 213 if you have a Pokemon with max happiness. So... Yeah, easy ways to get some ribbons. There's also just participating in contests and whatever, but Julia is definitely a good way to get ribbons that would help you get into here. Can you say anything now that I'm a member? Okay then. There's a Skitty here. Then there's colorful Pokemon goods. What about you? Just being in here is a sign of status, just so you know. I don't really care about that. Now, uh, right here, this clerk will sell you different ribbons. Uh, you know what? Why not? The gorgeous ribbon is 10,000 Poké Dollars. Why not? Let's, uh, let's put it on Genbu. So, right here, uh, gorgeous ribbon. Now, if you have a gorgeous ribbon on a Pokémon, well, the Pokémon in your lead, the next ribbon that becomes available here is the Royal Ribbon, 100,000 Poké Dollars. This is a very expensive ribbon. I guess it looks neat. And finally, after getting the Royal Ribbon, the next ribbon that becomes available is the Gorgeous Royal Ribbon. For 9,999, or wait, 999,999 Poké Dollars. One less from a million. This is the max amount of money that you can carry in this game. It's not worth it. I've gotten this ribbon before on a different playthrough. It's just not worth it. It's just a sign that you have been playing the game for quite a lot of time and you've amassed amount, or you have amassed a lot of money. See, I wish men would pay more attention to the way they dress themselves. Some some men do. Now up here, this is the main reason you would want to go into the Ribbon Syndicate. You want to go to the second floor. And up here. I'm just, uh... Oh, there was an NPC in this room. Anyways, if you go over here, let me just talk to you. Our service is very exclusive. We only accept five members a day. We keep our clients and Pokemon from seeing others. That way all our clients and their Pokemon can fully relax. And... Yeah, so if you talk to this person right here, you can get a spa treatment that will increase the friendliness of the Pokemon that's in the lead of your party. And I believe this actually increases the happiness of... A lot more than getting a massage from the NPC in Veilstone City. I might be wrong on that. This foam contains an extract uh, taken from pearls. I believe that they have different lines of dialogue as well. But, yeah. 
It's a daily thing. That's weird. Look at the trim on the wall there. It's, it's diagonal. That's really weird. Huh. Well, minor uh, graphical hiccups like that happen every now and then. Anyways, uh, there's one last thing I want to show off here in the resort area. And this is, uh, also a very big money sink. But, um, right down here over on the south side of the resort area. Did I check out the sign? A somewhat impressive villa. Huh. So right over here. Hey, uh, traveler. Yes, you. I want you to have this villa. Oh, wait. No, no, no. It's not what you're thinking. This is no scam. See, in fact, you'll be doing me a favor. See, I was given this villa, but to be honest, I don't need it either. So, uh, don't say a word. Just nod and this villa is yours. Uh, sure. That's a load off my mind. The original owner was from Hoenn, see? The owner collected up all the rare stones of Sinnoh and went back home. I somehow got saddled with this place as if it were some gift. There's no figuring what which, which, what rich folks will think of next. Still, I thank you for helping me out. Come with me, will ya? None too shabby, you have to agree. Step inside for a look-see. This is actually a pretty spacious place. The original owner's furniture is gone and I didn't buy any. So yeah, I know it's barren, but still, not bad, eh? Anyway, I feel kind of bad just imposing the place on you for nothing. I'll tell you what, order a table from this order form, and I'll do as my thanks to you. So the table, we get for free. And it's just one of the many, many pieces of furniture that we can get here. The furniture place is service is great, they're real eager for business. Look, they left another order form on the table they delivered. Anyway, I'm finally rid of this villa thanks to you. That can go back to traveling like I always wanted. I mean, you can travel and still have the villa. Hey, Ral, you got yourself a villa now? Whew, that's wicked awesome. You must be rich. Give me something. Hey, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm, I'll tell everybody you got a villa. Unnecessary, but sure. We just get given a house for free. We no, no, we no longer need to live in Twinleaf Town. This is a pretty nice house, but you know, we can order all sorts of furniture here. But the furniture is very expensive. And there's there's still more pieces of furniture. You can unlock more pieces of furniture depending on various things that you do. For example, one of the items that you can get is a piano after defeating the Pokemon League 10 times. And the piano will actually do something pretty cool. And various NPCs will eventually show up, like gym leaders, Lucas slash Don, Professor Rowan. It's pretty cool. Uh, gosh, all of this is just super expensive. And I don't really want to spend a ton of money. Um, the small sofa is the cheapest. Now, if you were to order everything in the villa... Oh, hey. Okay, then that was kind of random. Wait, I think we have similar tastes, Ralph. Uh, you run into so many Pokemon battles, and it's a bit much. Uh, yeah. Now, <laughs> getting all of the furniture items for the villa, it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of just doing other things. But the the catch here is that the amount of money it takes, I believe you're going to need to max out how much money you have. Many times over, I like like three or four times over. That's like how much all the items in total cost. I don't have an exact number here, but I have gotten all of the items in the villa in a previous playthrough. So, uh, yeah. Also, I, I just want to grab these berries that are right out here while I'm here. Lepa berry, which is nice. An extra way to recover PP. It is neat that it's right next to the Pokemon Center this year. This gives you a really nice place to just plant berries that you can just fly to. Pretty convenient. Now, what's this berry? Is this the Hondu berry? No, it's a lum berry. Another really useful berry. I swear there's an item here, though. Right? Yes! Aha! I was right. There's a nugget. Now, as for the previous owner of the villa, the one from Hoenn who, like, to collect rare stones. There's one of two people that could be. 
could either be the president of the Devon Corporation or his son. I mean, those are the most likely guesses because they are rich people that do like stones. I'm willing to bet it's the president's son because he definitely likes to travel around. But anyways, uh, let me just quickly show you what the villa looks like once you uh, have all the furniture items. So I swapped over to my first copy of Platinum, which was the file where I pretty much did everything that you could in this game. But anyways, I'm showing off the- Hello, Gardenia. Listen, listen, I came for a visit. Can I go in? Uh, sure. So, this is what the villa looks like when it is fully completed. As you can see... Oh. Here is the... L Stop pressing the A button, me. This is the list of all of the furniture that becomes available. Pretty, uh, pretty neat. So we have these two Glamia statues here. And I have a pair of these statues. I don't know why the game's like, it would be nice to have the pair. You can investigate some of these items as well. I guess that exemplifies the meaning of comfort. Uh, no, I don't want to open this. I want to investigate the table. Subtle curves accentuate its distinctive purpose. The corners are so round. Apple. <laughs> uh, pretty cool PC desk, I guess. It's a shame that you can't really use the PC here, though. And then there's this grandfather clock, a TV that you can use to view the TV, which is neat. The couch, the smaller couch. We have shelves that are lined with books left by Professor Owen, which is pretty cool. So that's actually pretty cool. There's some items here that will play music that is exclusive to the villa. That played a music box rem music box music box remix of Twin Leaf Town's theme, which is pretty neat. Have a bed stand here, a really nice looking bed. It's a shame that it can't like restore your Pokemon's health or anything. We have this uh, sound system here that will also play a song. So that song that played, oh and it just continues to play, which is pretty neat, it's a remix of Lily Cove City's theme from Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Oh, this is so dreamy, the resort area is a nice place, of course Eterna is a good place too, we have the huge forest first of all. Now this item here, the piano, which you get after defeating the Pokemon League 10 times, will play the theme that plays before you battle Cynthia. Really, really cool. And, like, Cynthia will show up in the villa once you buy this item. The NPCs that can show up in the villa have some pretty interesting fun facts to, to tell about themselves, which you wouldn't find out otherwise. Like, 
Volkner's favorite move, I think, is like Thunderbolt. And that's the reason why he likes electric types or um, Flint. He started using fire types because of his name. Some interesting fun facts like that. I'm not going to show off like every single NPC that can show up here, but the villa is a pretty cool place. Requires a lot of money to get everything, but still. Anyways, uh, that's really it for the villa, so let's just uh, get on with the rest of the episode. Okay, with that done, it's time for us to leave the resort area. There's nothing left for us to see here, so our next destination is to just explore. Root. Wow, that's a very, very long cord. I don't remember it being that long in Diamond and Pearl. I don't know. But right over here, Route 230. The last um, numbered route in the game. We still haven't explored Route 227, but in terms of the route numbers, this is the highest one. And you know what? Not the Pokedex. I don't. I did not want to go there. I want to go switch over to Bakugo because I can and get interrupted by a new wild Pokemon that we can find here, Celio. Celio is uh, it's a water ice type. It does have some competition with Lapras, both being bulky water Pokemon, and Celio does come at around the level where you could evolve it at. It evolves at level 44, so you don't have to work too much to get it to be fully evolved. But once it's fully evolved into Wall Rain, with it being a bulky water, it takes hits pretty well. One of the abilities it can get is Thick Fat, which reduces the damage it takes from Fire and Ice types. And I believe another one of the abilities it can get is Ice Heal, which makes it really, really good for, uh, for Rain Teams. Did I say rain teams? I meant hail teams. But just give it moves like Blizzard if you want it in the hail team. Has access to Surf and Ice Beam. Yawn to put things to sleep or force switches. It's a pretty pretty useful Pokemon in my opinion. I mean, I, I believe it is a little bit on the slow side, but it's, it's just really useful. If you're looking for a water type, it's definitely one that I can recommend. Now that's really it in terms of the new wild Pokemon that we can find here available through surfing, but there are more later on that I will talk about once we make so uh, some more progress in this route. Ooh, a Corphish. You know what? Uh, let's put Exia in the lead. Why not? Exia can use some experience. Having, having Bakugo use, or having Bakugo in the lead in a water route is uh, a questionable dis uh, decision, I might say but um this is actually also the last water route in the game which is pretty nice <laughs> don't really need to worry about that but surfing in this game really isn't that difficult or annoying considering we got hit by a critical hit uh no considering the surf speed in platinum has been boosted considerably compared to how it was in diamond and pearl so it's not that bad what are you sending out next Ooh. Kingler. Um, not sure if a close combat will be enough to take out this Kingler, but I am willing to try. Come on, Axia, you can do this. Mmm. Mmm. Well, it missed, so that's good. While I do like Axia's moves. Oh, you lived through that. Hmm. While I do like Exia's moves, it is, um... It is not that convenient for just traveling around. It is convenient for, like, the big fights where you have, like, all this, like, powerful moves, good priority moves, and then Ice Punch for coverage. But when traveling around, probably not the best moves that to have. Oh, well. Especially because, um because both extreme speed and close combat have low PP. Uh, let me just heal you up. And there's more trainers for us to fight. Right over here. People keep coming to us for battles. Uh, because we're in the battle zone. That's why. 
Now, what do you have? Do you have anything interesting? Love Disc is, uh... The opposite of interesting, I guess. With Psychic... Nah, I'm not... I'm not gonna risk. I'm just gonna bop the thing with a Thunderbolt. Okay. You know, for some reason, whenever I think of Love Disc, I think of Jelly Beans. I don't know why. It doesn't look anything like a Jelly Bean would, but... Whatever. Let's see. I think a Close Combat could take out Lapras. Probably. I do like Lapras a lot. I, I think I've said this before, but it's one of my favorite Pokemon ever. Has such a cool design. Maybe just because it resembles, like, Plesiosaurs. And I have had a fascination with the Loch Ness Monster. Which may... It, I mean, it's... The, the Loch Ness Monster was rumored... Or is rumored to be a Plesiosaur. And also, a fun fact about Lapras, its beta name was Nessie. So, that's cool. But, yeah. The Loch Ness Monster, if it does exist or not. If it does turn out to be a Plesiosaur that survived, that'd be pretty cool. I mean, it could be other things as well. I don't know. Actually, uh, there was one night. I just got on this, like, really, really weird, just, mood about looking up things about the Loch Ness Monster and things like that. And I remember reading, I don't remember if this was true or not, but I remember reading somewhere that there was an expedition where uh, a bunch of dolphins were let loose into Loch Ness and they had like equipment or whatever to try to find the Loch Ness Monster if it was real and all the dolphins died because they couldn't handle the change in water temperature from the ocean. That was very, very off-topic, but... Oh well. It's it's just one of those really weird things that fascinates me every now and then. I'll just get on these long... No, not long, but like... I'll just get in these moods where I'm like, Huh, we're just gonna look up things about the Loch Ness Monster, see if anything new pops up. So, uh, yeah. One of my favorite theories is that it's like, um... Like a water horse, is that it could be like there's a bunch of old uh, folk tales about what the Loch Ness monster could be, but I mean you have to take those with a bit of skepticism because some people could just be doing that just to uh, get a story or to get attention. Oh, your name is Mallory. I know a Mallory that makes well not personally, but like I watch a Mallory on YouTube that paints things. Anyways, the Celio that I just knocked out was level 49, so there you go. If you want to get one that's easy to evolve, catch that one. Or one around that level. Anyways, you. Do you have anything interesting? Mmm, artillery. Okay then. Uh, Thunderbolt should be enough to knock this thing out. No, I could probably teach, like, Thunder Punch to Axia. I mean, we're, we're, pa we're well past the point where I'm probably going to be changing Axia's moves, but... I remember thinking that I should do that early on in the Let's Play when I got Axia. Ooh, Poliwhirl. Um, you know what? Axia can take care of this. Axia can eliminate the targets. Mobile Suit Gundam down below, everyone. It's been a while since I've seen that series. It's one of my more favorite Gundam series out there. It, it was like the first one that I watched when I was old enough to understand what was going on in Gundam. Because I watched Gundam as a kid when it was on Toonami. Like, I believe I watched through episodes of Gundam Wing. But because I was a kid, I really couldn't understand what was going on. But when I came across Gundam Double O, like, in high school... Oh, I fell in love with it. Anyways, we're on this island in the middle of Route 230. There's some items for us to grab here, I believe. But there's also a new Pokemon I want to talk about. Uh, Bakugo reached level 59. But anyways, there is a new Pokemon that is available through mass outbreaks here, which is Corsola. Corsola is um, it's a water rock type. 
Not really the best water rock type out there. Has a cool cry at the very least, but it's just not a good Pokemon. It can use moves like Recover, but otherwise there's really nothing too noteworthy about it. Its stats are just not that good for this point of the game. So it's just really there for collection purposes. Now, the next wild Pokemon that we can find. It's not necessarily a new wild Pokemon, but it is one that I've talked about before, and that is Togepi. You can find Togepi with the Poker Radar, and although we already got one from Cynthia, which became Cosmos, if you want another Togepi, if the one that you got from Cynthia was uh, not the right nature or the ability that you want, you can just catch more here. And everything I've said about Togepi before is it's pretty much the same. Serene Grace is a good ability for it. Once Togepi is fully evolved into Togekiss, which does take a little bit of effort to get it to be fully evolved because Togepi needs high friendship to evolve into Togetic, and then Togetic needs a shiny stone to evolve. But once it's fully evolved, it has access to Air Slash to take use of Serene Grace. Have we seen a Wild Bell Sprout before? Probably. I don't think so, actually. Anyways, uh... Uh, Toga, Togekiss also has Flamethrower to make use of Serene Grace. Then, um, Aura Sphere for coverage, Yawn. If you want to breed some egg moves onto it, there's Nasty Plot to increase its special attack. Fire Blast, if you want to use that as a fire move instead. Just a really good Pokemon. It has a pretty good amount of bulk to it as well. Really good Pokemon that's worth using. So, definitely keep that in mind if you want to use Togepi. Anyways, that's really it for the new wild Pokemon that we could find here. All that's really left for us to do is to just finish exploring the rest of this route, and we're actually pretty close to the other side of this route. Just want to make sure I don't miss any items. Blue Shard, which is, I guess, nice. No? No items down there? Okay then. Let me just, uh... Go... Oh, really? You know, I didn't even realize Exia was already level 59, so... I'm just gonna switch out. Um, hmm. I'll put Bakugo back in the lead. Just because. Uh, let's try to leave here. No? Really? I thought there were more hidden items on this island. I guess not. Okay, well, let's just continue going to the west. And there's probably a couple more trainers left. Ooh, got a double battle here, potentially. Hmm, let me, uh... Put Exia here so Exia can also gain experience. Come on. There we go. So, let's see. Are your Pokemon growing properly? I would say so. They're all around the same level as well. But, yeah, I think my Pokemon are doing good. I mean, they'll probably beat your Pokemon in a fight. <laughs> hmm. Uh, let's see. Let's use Thunderbolt on the Celio and Ice Punch on the Delibird. Seeing a Delibird in the water route is just really, really weird. I think Delibird can learn Surf through HM. I might be wrong on that. Also, why isn't the Celio fully evolved? Eh. Oh well. Easy experience for me, but if it were a wall right now, I would get more experience. Whatever. Now, <laughs> present is just a weird move because it's you're throwing a present that explodes. Imagine just getting, like, a present for, your, like, your birthday or something, and it's, like, just a bomb or something. That's, like, the first thing that comes to my mind. See, that Gastrodon could be a bit of a pain, so... I'm gonna take care of that. Because the Deli Bird, quite frankly, cannot do a thing to me. Also, my Gastrodon is just better. Just because I like mine more. Therefore, it is the better Gastrodon. Oh, you lived! 
fine. Be that way. Rude. Um, just do that. And do that. Fun fact about present, I think I mentioned this when I actually did talk about Delibird, but it actually has a chance of healing the target. So that could be useful if like you want to heal your ally in the double battle, but it's just a move that relies too much on chance to be too useful. Ooh, Mantine. Hit the cord of my mic there. Uh, Thunderbolt. Eat this thunderbolt. Hmm. I'm gonna save some of my other moves for power points, even though I don't think I'm gonna be using Exia for the duration of this route. Oh well. Now, fun fact about Mantine for its sprite. Um, in generations two and three, you could see a Remoraid on a Mantine sprite, but. Generation 4 onward with uh, Mantine, there's no Remoraid on its sprite or its 3D model. Just a fun fact. I might be wrong on that, but I'm like 80% sure that that's the case. And now let me just reorder my party around. There has to be like one more turn. No? That's it? We're at the end? This route wasn't as large as I thought it would be. It's been a while since I've gone through this route, but I remember it being bigger. Anyways, there's some berries up here to grab. And see the let's see, kelp seed, which is another EV reducing berry. I believe that's for the attack stat. And a grepa berry, defense, special defense. I don't know. I just know it's one of the EV reducing berries. And now, with that done, right over here, no items, right? Yep. We're back at the fight area. So, Route 230, you could go this way from the fight area once, um, once you've done everything there. But if you don't have the National Pokedex, there's going to be two NPCs blocking the water here, so you can't make any progress until you get the National Pokedex, as well as beat uh Volkner and Flint right here so yeah but we're back here in the fight area we've made a complete loop around the battle zone so all that's left for us to do is to explore the very last area of the battle zone that we haven't been to which is Route 227 and Stark Mountain which we will begin to do in the next episode so thank you all so much for watching and see you all next time for some more Pokemon Platinum Later!